friends, today is all about why you're not manifesting the stuff you want or how you're not achieving your dreams. If you wait until you think it's all in perfect order and you've got it all figured out, that's just an illusion called procrastination. And procrastination is fear. It's just fear. Keeping you from doing it because you're telling yourself, well, I'm not ready yet. I don't know how I'm gonna do this yet. You know what? You don't need to know how you're gonna do it yet. This video is gonna be what's blocking you from creating what you want and then giving you a way through it and out of it and how to get beyond it. The first thing I wanna talk about today is desire. We all have to desire something before we can create anything. A lot of times I hear people say, but I don't know what I want. People think it's a bad thing to have desires. We're built on the desire to do something, to have something. What if you think you have no desire or you have too many desires or things that you want and you can't decide? It's the one that has the most fire in the belly. That's how you can decide right now what to do first. When you say, I don't know what I like. I don't have a hobby. I don't have a passion. Go with that first. This brings me next to the subject of manifesting. So girls, guys, you can't just sit there and say, give me a million dollars and expect it to happen. That's oversimplification. How's that work for you so far? You think the universe is punishing you by not giving you what you want. You're just sitting there not doing anything, not taking actual steps to make it happen. The missing link to manifesting that most people are doing is putting the thought out there, even putting the feelings out there, and just expecting it to happen. You can't just sit there without action and wait for your perfect partner to knock on your door accidentally at the wrong address. You pray to the universe, I wanna make $30,000 a month or several million dollars a year, while well, right now you make $1,000 a month. How the heck am I supposed to have that? So do you think your dream is too big for you? No, it isn't. You just haven't found a way to do it yet. And the way that stuff works is in steps and phases. Your psyche has to get prepared for bigger numbers than what you're used to before you can start to work toward and bring that to you. There is the law of attraction. That's all very real. But you don't just get to sit there and ask for things and expect it to show up with no effort on your part. It doesn't work that way. Meditation is part of the process of manifesting to get your mind and your subconscious and your conscious mind in alignment, but it's not the actual action steps in life to get stuff done that must be done in order to earn your dream. That's the other component to it. Action is the missing link to a lot of people manifesting using spiritual principles. Some people sit there and cry and complain, oh, that's not fair that he got handed a bunch of money from his family to start his business and I didn't, boo hoo. Well, how's that gonna get you any closer to your goal? We're all born into different environments and realities, so you have to deal with yours and stop comparing yours to others. Pretend like nothing else exists and deal with your own personal reality. Whatever limitations you have, you have to blow past them to take action steps. Every baby step counts. You don't even have to know what to do or how it's gonna happen. You literally just have to take any damn step and it'll start to unfold. That's how you partner with the universe. What happens early on won't even make sense sometimes and it's not supposed to because once you start taking action, the universe hears you and suddenly wakes up and says, oh, oh, he or she is finally starting. Oh goody, he's finally doing something other than yelling at us to do it for him. Call it God, universe, higher self, whatever your spirituality is, you'll be helped when you help yourself. And helping yourself means taking action. We have to have the idea first. We have to have the fire in our belly. We have to have the passion. We have to have the thought process. That's all the preparation stuff. Once you start taking a step, any step, the first five steps don't make sense. But the next 25 steps make sense when you look back on them. And, but you couldn't have even predicted the twists and turns and the, the serendipitous events that land on the path once you commit to the action steps. You're not gonna get it at first and you don't need to. So stop overthinking about, well, I don't know how to do it. Just start doing it. You're gonna be shown along the way. Things are gonna start to happen. Take steps. Do not stop. Put yourself behind your word. If you say you're gonna do something, do it. Step number one on how to do this, write out every single action step that you can think of to get you closer to your dream. 
Don't worry about putting them in order. Don't worry about making it this big grand plan. For right now, all you're trying to do is get these ideas on paper. What is something you can do to bring your dream closer? You want to meet a perfect life partner? What can you do? Well, how about leave your house? Where can you go? Who can you meet? Who can introduce you? If you're starting a business, what's an action step? You can start taking even if your business isn't defined yet. What can you do? Pick one action step, any one and frickin' start. If you wait until you think it's all in perfect order and you've got it all figured out, that's just an illusion called procrastination. And procrastination is fear. You know what? You don't need to know how you're gonna do it yet. You just need to write down a few steps about it and pick one and do that. And then let the next idea come because you will start being guided the more you take action. How much action are you really doing? How fast you're gonna manifest depends on what you're doing. Let's, let's take the self-improvement space that I'm in. You read a book and you go, well, but I wanna read one more book before I take action on this self-improvement goal. And the next thing you know, you're reading another book. Studying how to do something is part of creating your new dream, but it is not creating it yet. See how far you're gonna get in self-care and becoming thinner and more beautiful by not taking care of your skin or your diet. You're not, you're not gonna get any better. Beliefs, thoughts, feelings are blockages that stand in the way of getting your big ones. And they're also the ones that lead you to your ultimate goal and idea. But sometimes that needs to be changed too. It is the day to start thinking about your action steps and then doing something, taking one action step but get doing more, bump it up. Do things that bring you more. Step two, change the question from, what can I do? Not, what can the universe do for me? Well, I sit on the couch all lazy. Like, let's say you wanna save money, but over here you're spending money. Or you're trying to lose weight, but you're eating bad. How's that gonna work out for you? It's not gonna happen. Your wrong actions are gonna mess up your goal. It's not that you're not meditating enough or healing childhood trauma enough possibly, but no wonder you're not getting there. It's not that the universe hates you. If you wanna save money and things keep coming up to buy, just stop buying stuff. Just stop eating the bad food so you can lose weight. Number three, we're gonna talk about the word sacrifice. You're looking at sacrifice all wrong. Remember in episode two, I've talked about changing your perspective. Well, here's how to do it. You wanna stop eating bad food, so you decide to change your diet and eat whole foods. Nothing in boxes or bags, nothing with corn syrup solids on the labels, but you start. But in your head, you're holding the belief that you're gonna have to sacrifice and not have enjoyment anymore. And then don't even start the goal. Just stop right there and forget it because you just failed with a big capital S. Your perspective is so wrong, you may as well turn in the towel and keep eating badly because you're about to set yourself up for failure and with it comes a second bad thing. You then beat yourself up for not being able to achieve this. So don't do it at all, unless and until you change your viewpoint, your perspective about sacrifice. Here's how to do it. You focus on what you're choosing rather than what you're losing. Say that again and write it down. Focus on what you're choosing rather than what you're losing. You tell yourself before you even start that this decision is your choice. It's a positive choice that will gain you everything you ever wanted. So you're winning, not losing. You're not sacrificing, you're winning. And then you can start when you get your mindset. After you start, when you, when you don't waver and you've written this stuff down somewhere so it's easily accessible to remind yourself as many times as it takes so you keep going. And it won't take that long before the lifestyle is taken hold, but you have to change the sacrifice mindset. Otherwise, you'll never do it. By making a certain trade-off or sacrifice, you'll feel like you're gaining things. It's going to develop within you, that feeling. And you know why it does? It's because you are. Your gain, your improved feelings of energy and vitality will far outweigh the stuff you once put in your body. I can attest to this because I've done it. I've gained everything I never even knew that I could have. So no matter my bad days and my insecure days that come occasionally, I, I now have what I never used to. I feel awesome. I feel great about myself. 
I've started a new career and my risk taking is as strong as it ever was, meaning I'm handling my fear and courage because I know how to do it. So everything starts with the mindset shift. So how can I tell you how to do this? You have to just change your mind, changing your thoughts about something. Then you change your mind to get to a decision that leads to that conviction. Since that thing in your belly that you're just going to do this thing. And if you can't change your thoughts about the word sacrifice, then don't choose that goal right now and work on changing your mindset first. This is why we talk about thoughts being the first part about manifesting, because you're going to set yourself up for failure, in my opinion. And so you have to get your head on straight first. And it all stems from changing perspectives, hearing a new perspective and adopting that. I just told you one. That's a big shift. That's a big shift on the word sacrifice and how you view weight loss. Apply it to any change that you feel, oh, I have to sacrifice in order to do that. No, you don't. You don't. Not if you look at it that way. So number three, how you change perspective is by choosing a different one and focusing on that instead of the other one. It's as simple as that. That's the only way to do it. You, you have to observe what you're currently thinking and believing and change it on the spot again and again until you believe it. And let's, let's take that, going back to the sacrifice idea. Let's say you believe, well, if you go on a diet, you're gonna sacrifice foods that you love, that you can't have anymore, so you're gonna suffer. You can change that. You don't have to believe that. If, if and when I do this, guess what I get from it? I get to feel fantastic. I get to feel great. I get to just have energy. And you know, in my 60s, I have more energy now than I did when I was 30. And I'm not kidding when I say that. So if you can't do it yet, don't do it yet because you want to get that mindset right. So you've got that really great opportunity for success. And you keep coming back to it when you do fall down and you slip. So when you get to the decision and how you feel about that certain decision, your perspective on that is the thing. Feel really good about a sacrifice. So look at this like a trade-off. I have to stop doing this, so I get that. Okay, I was partying, but I had to make a trade-off to not party so that I could start achieving some new goals. I knew that that was gonna hinder me from going forward with what I had in mind that I wanted to change. Okay, I knew I was going into my life spending a little more time alone while I'm on this journey that I'm on right now, but I wanted this. So that isn't a sacrifice. A lot of people will make a trade-off. You know, a trade-off of a current life of partying or drinking for the potential of success sometimes can feel very hard. But if you commit to it and figure it out, you'll do it, you'll get there. You know, you're gonna do it or you're not gonna do it. And if you're not gonna do it, that's okay. I'm just here trying to help you find some ideas, some ways to plow through our human condition that's full of resistance, isn't it? I mean, we all have resistance. So hopefully some of my ideas on some video somewhere might appeal to you because I've been the least disciplined person that I know. And I am now becoming one of the most disciplined people that I know. And that's shocking to me, <laughs> but it's happening and it's true. And it's only been happening from one baby step to the next, those micro habits that have been slowly forming and you let yourself fall down, you pick yourself up, you keep going. So you're gonna make decisions on what you will and won't sacrifice. And it's your life, you're free to do whatever you want. Here's the fourth thing in the how to do this. Ask yourself this question, which action is going to get me closer to my goal? That's the right one. That's the right one to start first. Now, number five, what to do when stuff goes wrong, because it's going to. Stuff messes you up. Here's what you do. You recommit every single time when something goes wrong. When you try something, there's an obstacle. It didn't work. How much you're willing to recommit to it is everything. And so everything that goes wrong that you recommit to tells the universe and also yourself that nothing can stop you from putting everything into it. You just passed another universal test and you're one step closer. It's like saying to the universe through your dedicated action, even in the face of friction and resistance, that you're right there committed 
and nothing's going to get in the way. So bring it on. I'm going to plow through the ride because you will be rewarded. Keep committing again and again. You have hurdles that are going to be thrown on your path and stuff is going to happen to you. But you are going to stop putting energy into that and you're going to put the energy right back into what you're trying to create. If you don't do that, you're never going to get what you want and you're going to quit. The first obstacle that closed you in a direction, something bad happens and you go, ah, oh, well, forget it. This is too hard. No, it isn't too hard. It is not too hard. You're just too lazy. Sorry. So the more you recommit things, the more things line up. Like you might say to the universe, enough already. Okay, I have had enough obstacles, enough stuff. Yeah. You'll get sick of the obstacles crossing your path on the way to your goal. But girls, guys, when you quit, it's an automatic lose. Just look at the obstacle in the face and slay it seriously. And I'm not oversimplifying this. Push through it and push past it as long as your desire or fire for the thing is still within you. The harder it gets and the closer you get to your goal, the more you need to keep recommitting. After the first time, the second, the fourth, the fifth time doing this, you'll you, here's what's going to happen. You start to see things line up. It's like a streak of things stacking up in your favor. And the longer you stay committed, you do get the attention of the universe that you're super serious about this thing. Then you're going to start noticing real serendipitous things occurring that you think are coincidences at first. But as you look back, once things happen, you realize they were small miracles that couldn't, that you possibly could not have orchestrated by yourself. Weird things like you meet a person that's exactly right for what you need next on your path. I can't tell you how many times this has happened to me. I counted on it in this magical way when you get in that flow state. And that's what everyone's talking about with the flow state. The flow state isn't about everything being easy. It's about things being hard and going through it anyway. It's like a, a chart. You think of it like a stock exchange chart. Staggering up, going up, but staggering up and down all the way. You, you, you're up, you fall, you up, you fall, you up, you fall, but you're still heading in that straight up direction all along. That's what it's like. It's not that there's no obstacles. It's that you have to handle the obstacles and recommit and keep going. This is where it starts to feel magical. And it really is. The universe is there to help you, but only when you're actually a co-creator with it and not a passive observer. Passive observers get much of nothing in life. I always wonder why it is that monks are broke if they're so connected to God. Well, it's because they don't do anything active to make anything happen. They spend their lives in meditation. Okay, granted, maybe they don't need money because they've got their security needs met, but you get the idea. There's a story in the news about a guy who was shot in the back of the neck while he was at a gas station and was paralyzed from the neck down for the rest of his life. You know what he did? He became a successful software engineer he had every reason to sit around and give up and not pursue his dream, much less anything in life. So if you have a working body and mind, you've got no excuse. Not even depression or anxiety either. You can get up, you can get through those phases. I've done it because I grew up with that one too. So I can speak to it to tell you that I've given up so many times be because of depression, but every single time I got back up. Do something to fix yourself then, because there are progressive treatments out there now that go beyond pills and talk therapy and are miraculous at healing these illnesses now. So stop walling in that and do something to fix it. The universe is not gonna do it for you. A few stories I promised. When I had the desire to make this video podcast, everything went wrong every single time and, and still does on most videos. My mic, my camera, my first few recordings, I had to re-record so many times. I thought I would never get any episodes out. Something would break. I forgot to hit this record button or that record button or had an extra microphone on the sound panel that had interference in the background. I mean, it just goes on and on. The camera angle was wrong. There was something on my shirt. I had lipstick on my teeth. There was a piece of mascara under my cheek. After all the recording was done, I had to start all over again. It is so hard 
to do this. And I mean that sincerely. Ask any any content creator out there. I'm sitting here right now surrounded by equipment that you're not seeing. My sister knows I would call her some evenings after I was down in my studio and I was so excited. I got everything recorded and only to come up, put the cards in, watch everything and to find out there was no sound. Or like I said, there was makeup, there was something wrong. And I would be in tears telling her like, I cannot believe I have to go do it again. And I'm so tired and I was already excited and did the whole thing. And now I have to go back down there, fix my hair and makeup again get redressed again, because usually by that point, I'd put on pajamas and think, oh, yeah, I got it all. I can start editing. No, and I have to do it again. Do you know how many times I thought about quitting this? I'm like, this is hard. Wow, this is harder than I thought it was gonna be. I thought this was gonna be pretty simple. Turn the camera on, turn the lights on. Oh my goodness. So the point is I have to recommit, I recommit, I recommit. And I still do because I'm still relatively lost some days on what I'm gonna do next. But here's the thing, I made it happen. I bought the lighting, I bought the software, I committed to how to figure out all this technology. You know, even through the lipstick on my teeth and re-recording. My first five episodes took so long. And then to be embarrassed and know that this journey is crap in the beginning. So I keep recommitting and I keep learning and asking for feedback so I could course correct when I know my video wasn't good enough and didn't hit. I'm recommitting. Anyway, I'm living proof right now. I am living the process I'm talking to you about. And no matter how embarrassing I may feel sometimes about what I'm doing and how I'm doing this journey in public, I want this. And I want to get to the point that I can see in my own vision. I can get there and get better and better and better. But some days it's, this is, this is harder than the, the weight loss and the, the other stuff, you know? This is a sacrifice, but, I, it's, but it's not, again, because when I do a good job, it feels fantastic. And the other thing about this type of a goal, whatever your goal might be, again, money, weight loss, career change, reinventing your life, reinventing your health, your beauty, your skincare, your relationships, your family life, your hobbies, no one's going to tell you you're doing a good job. You know, if you want that, you have to pull it out of people because no one offers it up, not very often. You know, we'll always hear what we're doing wrong. At times, you just have to have thicker skin than at other times because we're human and we do question things all the time. You know, should we quit? Should we keep going? Is this going to work? Is it not going to work? Is this going to take too long? Is it going to be okay? So. Even in what I'm doing, while I work hard to find my voice and get through these nerves little by little, because I have them. I mean, I'm nervous on camera, I'm nervous as heck, but I'm hoping eventually to get to that vision and achieve it, the one that I do see myself growing into as this particular creator in this marketing realm. So I'm being very patient with myself, even though some days it's very challenging to do that. The more you continue recommitting, the more confidence you'll feel, the more stamina you'll gain to keep going. And that's the truth. It's a roller coaster ride, just know that. But when you're going for a big goal, it's not linear. It is up and down. So you have to snatch the power out of the universe and find it within yourself. You have to do your part. When you can say to yourself in the universe, screw it, I can do it with or without your help. I'm doing this anyway. That's when you can feel happy and fulfilled. Now, you can just choose right now to be in control of your goal by taking a step. And how and when will then actually manifest. You don't have to have it all figured out, but you do have to start. So having said that, I want to thank you so much again for listening and watching. And I'm happy you're here. I'm so happy to be with you. I'm having so much fun doing this and I'm just getting excited that stuff is gonna get juicy now because if I can help you start creating some new things and get bolder, and I mean it, I'm just, it just would be so exciting to me because that's what life is. It's inspiring and it's an enjoyable ride. Let's do it. So this has been the Wilder Talk Show. It's Kate here signing off. Until the next time, subscribe and like and all that good stuff. I will see you soon. Thank you and bless you.